In this presentation, we're going to introduce the internal controls related specifically to cash. Cash internal control goals. These are going to be the objectives of the internal control system over cash. We want to have the cash handling separate from the record keeping. So whoever is handling the cash, we would like to have them uh, not be the same person doing the record keeping. And therefore, we have that separation of duties. We have the person that is entering the data not having as much of an incentive to uh, steal the cash because they're not the ones handling the cash. The people handling the cash know that if they do steal it, the record keeping should pick that up and they are a separate person. Cash receipts are deposited to the bank. We want to make sure that the cash receipts are going to the bank as soon as possible, hopefully on a daily basis so that we're not accumulating cash. We don't want a cash to be um, piling up because if it is, then we have a greater risk of theft to happen and a greater loss if theft does happen. And we want to put it into the bank as soon as possible. That'll help us basically to safeguard the cash. It'll also help us to record the cash more accurately. The bank being someone who is going to have a separate record of the cash recordings as we go for us. Cash payments made by check or uh, electronics funds transfer. And this is going to be, we don't really want, the point here is that we don't really want to make our payments for purchasing for business with cash. And the reason is that we, there's no cash audit trail for it. I mean, if we use cash, we don't have a good audit trail. Now, some people think of cash and they think, well, if I, if I have cash payments, no one could track that and possibly might think of that as a good thing that, you know, people can't see what you're doing or there, you know, some, the government can't see what you're doing or something like that. But note that we want good record keeping, of course, when it's our records, because we want to be able to go back and say, hey, what did I spend the money on? We want to have an audit trail so that when we look at our purchases, we can see what happened. If we purchased everything with cash, we don't have a good audit trail. We can't go back to our bank statement and say, hmm, what did I write the check for? Well, who did, who did we write the check for? We can easily find that when we write the checks. We also have control over someone who's going to sign the checks as opposed to possibly someone requesting that the cash payment be made. So if a cash payment is being requested by one part department and or for a small business and one of our employees has a cash payment request or is dealing with the payables, we could still take control over the check signing activity. And that can be a, a, an effective internal control so that checks aren't written, of course, for illegitimate reasons. Electronic fund transfers can have similar types of internal controls and be uh, quicker as well. So uh, we could do that electronically as well and have a similar uh, trail of tracking to see what is going on. And, uh, and so the point here is to limit the, the cash disbursements so that we have that tracking. Cash and cash equivalents. Now cash is going to be anything that's going to be really liquid, something that we're going to be able to pay off our short term obligations with. We typically think of cash as being physical cash or something that's going to be in our bank account or our checking account. Now, if we're talking about something that's going to be fairly equivalent to cash, cash and cash equivalents, we're talking about something that's going to be due really soon, something that we could we can also basically uh, have access to and pay off our accounts with very quickly. If we have a long term constraint on uh, the, the type of investment that we have, then, of course, we wouldn't be calling a, in a cash or cash equivalent. Managing cash. When talking about managing cash, we're talking about the plan a receipt to be able to cover payments. And this seems kind of obvious, but it, when we talk about accrual accounting, note that we're not accounting for our, for our income statement, our revenue and expenses with cash flows. So we want to make sure that as we do accrual accounting,